for Christmas this year, I've decided that I'm going to 3D print my own snow globe with my own characters. So let's jump right into it. My idea for this snow globe is to have Curio and Curia building a snowman together. To make this, I'm going to make use of my 3D printer, of course. I have fake snow and also some clear craft glue which is what people use that I'm going to use to make the snow fall slowly. So originally I actually started this video about two weeks ago. That was when I got my idea, ordered all my stuff and was ready to start recording. The only thing that set me back was the actual globe itself. This thing took an extra week to arrive, which was really annoying, but now it's here. I've actually already modeled everything and got it ready for print and I didn't record any of it. So, let me talk you through it now. Okay, hopefully this green screen footage is actually working. Otherwise, it's gonna be an awkward watch for you guys. Basically, I'm gonna go through my Blender file and just explain what I did. So you guys have already seen the render that I made uh, of the two building a snowman, and I'm pretty happy with it. I did all of the modeling for this off camera, which is kind of annoying, but I mean, the modeling process is pretty straightforward and it's the same in every video. So I wanna actually talk to you about how I'm planning to print this. As you would know, if you watched the collectibles video, I bought a Bamboo Lab A1 with the AMS light. So I can actually print in multiple colors and make this a whole lot easier for myself. But I decided not to. Basically, if I print in multicolor, it wastes a lot of filament. And I'm frugal, let's say. A little bit of me dies inside every time I see it. If you print one model multicolor, generally, you're gonna waste more filament than used on the actual model. When I did the collectibles, it wasn't as bad because I was printing multiples of the same thing. Printing multicolor also takes a lot more time because it has to account for all the times the print head is gonna come back, swap colors, spit out the rest of the color, and then come back and print the layer. And it does that every single layer. So it actually adds a considerable amount of time onto the prints, which is just a waste for me. And I don't wanna do that. So I did it differently. So for this project, I've decided to print it all on separate plates, sorted by color. An easier way to explain this would be, you can see the snowman is white, the heads of the characters and the legs of the characters are also white. So those I've separated and I'm printing on a full white plate. So there won't be any color switches. It'll just print white, there'll be no purge. Yeah, we're saving white basically. And then the red parts like the hat and the clothes will also be printed on a plate and then the black parts like the hat and the glasses will be printed on their own plate as well. This will save me time, but it will also save me filament, which is something that I'm not complaining about. So every model is able to be put together with pegs and a little bit of super glue. And uh, yeah, I'm printing them now. So I think the next thing you'll see is me actually putting together the models, which is exciting. Uh, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> Okay, what do we got? Got some of our pizzas here. Curio and Curia, which Curia doesn't have a head yet. Here we go. Curia, the parts all fit together. Then there's Curio here. So his legs fit as well. His head I'm um, put on with a little bit of force and then I've got his hat. Let's pop it on. Okay, well, look. I think the peg is a bit too tall, cause uh, what a boy. Yeah, that's that's insane. If this doesn't come off, it will not be fine. Okay, it came off. We're good. We're good. Everybody, stop panicking. Whatever, man. Yeah, that's these two. They look great. I'm chuffed with them. I'm currently using a little bit of blue tack to hold them all together. The parts do fit, but they're a little bit loose. They're not like super tight. Also need to sand the models because there are bits like this underneath her dress. It's just kind of rough and I would prefer to sand it and just have it nice. Yeah, I'll just put a bit of blue tack on the end of the leg here and shove it in her leg. And yeah, that's in there. So the next test I would like to do with these is with the globe itself. It's actually quite big, like it's 
definitely, you know, pretty big, but it essentially comes in two parts. There's this part, which is the lid, but then there's also this part here, which is a bit of plastic that fits in there very tight, and I'm imagining sort of watertight. What I thought we could do is take these models and blue tack them onto this, and then put the globe over the top and see how they fit. Basically, the way I got the scale of these guys was took the ruler and I was like, okay, that looks good. So the, I believe the snowman is eight centimeters, I want to say. And I'm fearful that because he's so big, not everything will fit. On. We can put Curia on like, um, you can probably see she's already coming off the edge a little bit, which is kind of annoying. It's gonna be in here as well. Okay, so they're all on there. It's uh, not super stable, but hopefully it's enough of a hold to just test. So now we can take this and we can put it over the top. Bro got too much of a dumpy, this ain't gonna work. I think I need to reprint this guy a little smaller because he's huge. This is just the first bit and then we actually have to make the whole globe, so. Uh, he looks great. Um, now I'm just hoping that he'll fit So let's... It doesn't fit again. This was starting to get really annoying. So I remodeled it again. I changed the position that the characters were in and I scaled down the snowman considerably. This time it actually fit in the globe, which was satisfying to say the least. As I mentioned before, I printed all the characters in separate parts. So I took some super glue and I began gluing the legs, the heads and the hats onto the characters. I also gave a quick paint job to some of the parts, just like the snowman's face, Curio's hat and Curio's waistband. And after that, it was on to prepping the globe. Okay, I'm using my phone for audio, so I'll see how this goes. Now I'm here. So the pieces actually fit, which was nice. It took a little bit of trial and error and it definitely hit stage two. There's always a part in these videos where I think, God damn it, I shouldn't have done anything. But uh, yeah, now we're good. I gave them all a little bit of paint and now I've just sealed them with some Mod Podge. I used like a shiny Mod Podge this time, which basically is going to seal them for me to ensure the color doesn't leak into the snow globe water. And I used a shiny one because I thought it looked good and it'd be fitting for like a Christmas theme. Once they're fully sealed, I can then glue them onto the base, which I'm going to use hot glue to do that. Once that's fully dry, I can start mixing up the glue, glitter and water. I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else to add. So. After all the models were dry and shiny, I was ready to hot glue them to their base. It's recommended that you sand down the base before you glue your characters onto these, just to give the glue a better surface to adhere to. So after sanding it, I took my hot glue, I took my characters and I glued them on. Then with the hot glue, I made little dabs around the floor and sprinkled snow onto them so it looked like it had been snowing. Now this is where I started to get a little bit anxious. I did a test fit of my characters into the globe before adding any water or any glue and I should have known it would work first try. <laughs> Now, of doing my research on snow globes, I've read multiple things that say you can use baby oil, glycerol, or you can use clear glue to add some viscosity to the water and make the snow fall slower. I began adding the snow and the glue into the water. I stirred it, and to be honest, I'm not sure why people say you can use clear glue, because this absolutely did not work. So then I went to the store and picked up some glycerol, which worked way better. With one part glycerol to every two parts of water, I used in total 400 mils of glycerol, which I thought was a lot, but I guess not. And it looked perfect. So once I was happy with the mixture, I began slowly pouring it into the globe. This is where I could finally see the project coming to life, and I was getting so excited. 
I added some more snow on top just to make sure there was enough. I used hot glue around the edges to seal it. Then I added my characters. That actually looks so much more. That looks so good. Mm. I couldn't resist. I gave the globe a test shake. <gasps> and it was a mistake. Curious has just come unstuck. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. So I unscrewed it, I glued on Curio with more glue, and we were good. And finally, with the help of my grandma and my girlfriend, I made this awesome base to go on the bottom of the globe, which I think really gives it some character. And with that, well, Merry Christmas everyone.